What the fuck's happening, people? Welcome to the General Banter Podcast. It's the 30th of November. It's a Monday. I'm releasing this on a Tuesday. So technically, it's the 1st of December. Okay? Merry Christmas or whatever. Um, I'm operating at a fucking depleted level of energy because Mickey Bartlett and Aaron McCann have just left here because we pre-recorded a podcast, which I'll talk about in a minute. So it's basically, it's like sprinting up a hill and then, you know, having to sit down and concentrate and, I don't know, do something uh, like a puzzle, you know, when you're like fully out of breath. Something re- like thread a needle when you're really out of breath. That's that's how I feel right now. But uh, we're up top. Let's mention our sponsors. Manscaped, they're on board. We've sold enough ball shavers to get them fucking right signed up. And they're like, we're in on the General Bander podcast. Um, the raid this week, they've given me a raid. That's how serious we've got. Male host, they've got a read here from male host, performance package copy. The holidays are here, or as they call it in this neck of the woods, fucking Christmas. Have you made your wish list yet? Our sponsor today is number one uh, wished for gift of the year, Manscaped. You know? Uh, the best of men's below and above the belt grooming. Manscaped is here to ensure that you take care of your manhood and nose hairs with their new performance package. Bro, there's packages, okay? It's not Christmas. You don't fucking sign up and just buy this. The lawnmower 3.0, you know, the anti-snag, shave your bag. It's all good, baby. They've got packages here. You know what I'm saying? What do we got here? Uh, they're, they're, they've got packages now with nose and ear shaving things. You know, you shave your balls and then, you you know, you got a new, a new piece of kit that, that's going to do your nose and ear hair. Nose hair I can get behind. Ear hair, I don't know if I'm quite old enough to be dealing with ear hair just yet. It would look strange considering I shave my head, so it would be totally bald. But then with the fucking dreadlocks coming out of my ears. Nevertheless, there are cunts out there with hairy ears. So these are the products. Uh, performance package, uh, ultimate man's hygiene. Imagine opening an attractive box that say your balls will thank you. That's what. That's literally what the box... In fact, the t-shirts that they send out, they sent me out a t-shirt. It's quite a cool t-shirt, but I'm, am I going to walk around with it saying your balls will thank you on the back? Probably not. I'll work out and I'll sleep in it as jammies. Um, included in the new package is the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Trimmer, uh, which is waterproof. So you can get in the fucking shower and people are like, what are you doing in there? And you're just like, you can shave your fucking nostril with this thing. And I'll tell you what else looks like a nostril. Your asshole. So who's to, who's to say you can't just fucking get in around that wrinkle button? You know what I'm saying? Uh, 9,000 RPM motor powered 360 degree rotary dual blade system. Jesus Christ. You get that. You also get the lawnmower 3.0. Uh, it's just it's just an all around fucking uh, all around good package. Brilliant. Any girls out there going, what did I get? That's fucking hairy bastard for Christmas. Get him a Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com. The listeners of the podcast, of course, get 20% off uh, if they use the code GENBAND1. So get in there. Get the fucking nuts. Clean. Shave the nostrils out. And uh, get those ears fucking dealt with as well. It's all good, man. Let's play that intro. Let's play our intro. Full thing, too. Jesus Christ. Unbelievable. The General Banter Podcast with Cole. In fact, you get the. there's no hair up your nose so you can get a good whiff of your freshly shorn ball toned and deodorized nut sack. Merry Christmas, man, Lynch. you know what I'm saying? Right about you, baby. I want you to get yourself and your soul together. This man will make your liver quiver. This man will make your bladder splatter. Let's all welcome the world's godfather of soul. Poland Jettis. Uh, it's Gettis, actually. Jettis. Gettis. Jettis. 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 Fuck you. <laughs> Mickey Bartlett has pointed out before that the podcast intro is, in fact, too long. And when you're sitting here, kind of, you know, killing time. That button is going to ruin this podcast. Because it will, it, it drops at the worst times. You know, you'd be like trying to be deadly serious. Yeah, and I can't believe that they passed away. I'm terribly sorry to hear about that, you know. Um, and of course, when you hit it, it doesn't work. But if you just hit anywhere on the fucking table, it comes on. Roadcaster, sort your fucking shit out, you piece of shit. I'm on my second podcast today, folks, which, you know, I tried to articulate it earlier. It's like running up a hill. I've, in, the, in the break, in the, in the time that has passed with that intro, I've, I've realized what it is akin to. It's, it's like having two wanks in a row. You know, I've already blown my load. 
on a pre-recorded podcast, which I is going out as part of my 12 pods of Christmas, which I announced uh, on, on social media last night. And what that is, folks, you know, every week I come on here and I'm like, guys, get yourself over to the Patreon. We're doing bonus podcasts, blah de blah That's how podcasters make a living nowadays. Uh, I haven't seen much of a living from it because I pay for rent and tons of shit. We've got sound killing, cancelling blankets. We have a producer. Lights, camera, action. You know what I mean? Someday I'll buy fucking new trainers. But um, the deal there is, you know, you listen to the free podcast every week, this one, and then you, uh, you, sign, you, you sign up and you donate a bit of money. And I don't really like talking like that. People are like, oh, I'm supporting your Patreon. Don't support my Patreon. Just buy more content if you like. If you like uh, listening to this podcast and you want more, you get on there and you, you buy more content. And uh, there's no tears on it as yet. I might rethink that when it comes to these 12 pods of Christmas because it's it's work, okay? And Niall has developed a serious Adderall problem. I'm trying to fucking edit these goddamn podcasts. So from here <clears throat> to Christmas, there probably won't be a bonus podcast every week. We're going to put one out every Tuesday as per usual. However, we are in the background recording 12 extra episodes. So instead of getting four extra a month, this month you're going to wait a little minute, deal with the regular podcast, and then from the 25th through to the 5th of January, you're going to get a podcast every motherfucking day. How about that shit? Unbelievable. But yeah, it, it, it's like having two wanks in a row trying to do uh, trying to do two podcasts because when you've got Armacan and Mickey in here, there's so, there's a lot of laughing done, and uh, or as they call it, a workout. Because I put up a photo on Instagram today, and I tell you what, I look like a fucking Olympic athlete between these two cunts. Am I right? Nile agrees. I put up a photo of the three of us. And I was, I was trying to think of a funny ca- caption. It was going to be like, listen, you know, it's not very often. What? what are, you laughing? are you laughing at that photo? Blood pressure on flake. Someone fucking private messaged me, and I think the guy does medicine. And he literally was like, Aaron should see a doctor. Do you know what I mean? You can't be like 26 in your head. Be about to fucking erupt every time you goddamn laugh. You know? Your best mate's a PT and you're getting sent free meals. Bro, fucking shred it up, man. Jesus Christ. But I was, I, I don't know what I was going to write for that caption. I was going to write, oh, maybe the hams, you don't, you don't see the ham on the outside of the sandwich very often. These two. I'll make you all joke. Yeah, you, you're a fat bastard. No, fucking, you know, whatever. We're all, we're all big guys. Not, no, I'm a big guy. Those two fucking piglets. <laughs> sort it out, man. But it was fucking very funny. And, uh, you know, I'm running on fumes at the minute. Like we did, we did a lot of laughing. That I, I feel like that's the one of the few podcasts might need a second pass through it just to be like, is that necessary? You know, I said a racist joke in there, but I was kind of doing it because I, you know, I'm a racist. But I just <laughs> no, there's a racist joke in there because it was the the joke was on the table, and I might I might take it out. You know, just just to see if any bullshit. Um even though I'm pretty sure the girl in the video was racist, but it's all good. And uh, so what, what we're doing is we're, we're pre-recording some. Uh, at the minute, we have about seven confirmed guests, and uh, we have about five more places to play with. So <clears throat> maybe four. I know I'm going to do one with Maureen, and uh, that'll probably be a precursor to a new podcast that we launch maybe sometime next year. Um, but... Yeah, there's a couple of places to play with there. So if anyone has any good suggestions of people that might be interesting to talk to, you know, float them over. And uh, and don't be sending me any that you know, like people are like, "Oh, you should fucking do Mickey every week. It's only time it's funny." You fucking bastard. Um. But you know, I mean, I was joking about the blood pressure. Our boy, our boy Pete downstairs, I was like, I'm going to McDonald's. And he goes, uh, what do, you, do you want anything? And he, and he goes, I'm diabetic, I've just found out. But, and even though it makes my vision blurry, I'll take a banana milkshake out of McDonald's. Now, I was, I was not concerned about the diabetes, who gives a fan fuck, but I was like, are you the only person 
in Ireland who will order a banana milkshake? I have never, ever. I mean, if someone ordered, like, can I get a banana milkshake and a filet of fish? You'd be like, shut up, you hipster fuck. You know what I mean? Unbelievable. Banana milkshake. It tastes like, if I recall co- correctly, <laughs> recall correctly, it tastes like that, you know, like, the doctor will give you, like, some sort of medicine when you're a kid, and it's banana flavoured. I would throw up so hot. I hate bananas. Heartburn sausages, that's what I call them. One of, one of about three products in life that when I eat it, I'm guaranteed I just fucking almost die of heartburn. Since we're, this is the health episode, since we're talking about that, surely there's a doctor out there who's like, listen Colin, you shouldn't be dying of heartburn when you eat a piece of fruit, you fat fuck. Eat bacon all day, no heartburn. One banana, heartburn. Puff pastry, heartburn. God forbid I had a banana croissant, I'd fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if, you, if you're getting banana milkshakes out of fucking uh, McDonald's, you need to take a look at yourself. Um, so yeah, the 12 pods of Christmas, I just thought it would be something exciting to do over Christmas. Just not, you know, I hate when people are like, I'm just giving back. I'm not really, I'm trying to do something exciting at Christmas. Because it's been a fucking nothing year. We covered it in the podcast earlier with, with Mickey and, and Aaron. It's like about four things happened this year. You know, kind of nothing. And then someone had a fucking bat, and then there was a lockdown. George Floyd, bloody, 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 blah. Trump goes. Here we are. Second fucking lockdown, and we're just kind of waiting. Like, well, it'll be all right. A, a lot of people are in that mind frame of 2021, first of January, off to the races. It's gonna be all good. And it's probably not. It'll probably, I'd say, you're probably looking at more like a full year in a new lockdown till they get a vaccine. If people are willing to take it. Even though they're borderline fucking... I mean, some of the facts. Joe Mickey said... I met Mickey last week in a car... We'd hear this. Met him at a car park in Craig Alvin because I'd take Maureen to the hospital. And I was like, yo, bro, you up? The most unsexy you up ever. You up at fucking to half nine in the morning? And I was like, meet me in this car park. I'll go to the drive through Starbucks. And we sat in the corner... The pro- people are probably looking over going, these boys dealing hash or what's going on? And we're like, no, we're actually talking about the technicalities of a vaccine distribution. Here's Mick, right? Uh, I was listening to this expert. This is, this is making me laugh. Listen to this expert uh, on the radio or on a podcast or something. And he said, like, oh, the chances of you dying from COVID are like one in a million. And I went, okay. And the chances of you, like, dying from getting struck by lightning is like one in 500,000. So you're, you're like twice as likely to get to die of COVID. Or no, you're twice, what was it? You're twice as likely to get die of being hit by lightning. And I went, hold on, Mike. How many people are in Northern Ireland? And he's like, oh, what is there, like seven or eight million? And no, I, I don't know. I, I'm th- I, think, I think I've heard that somewhere, right? And I'm like, that would mean that maybe like eight people have died. And there's definitely been way more than eight. And he was like, uh, oh, bro. When I'm when I'm picking holes in your argument, you, it means that you're one step, like you just crawled out of a lake somewhere. That's fucking, that's some silly shit. I'll be taking it like, I'll be taking all three of them. I'll have them throw them up my ass like a dartboard. Get them in there. Mm. Get it in there. Get... Get the comedy clubs open. Let's have a bit of a fucking laugh again. You know, I'm sure there's people out there want to go want to go out and you know rim a stranger in a in a, in the limelight toilets without risk of getting COVID. So there you have it. Um, there was also a message. <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying to put out more podcasts. There's people messaging me going like. I got a message there. Someone's like, oh, I've just started listening to this in the last few months. It's really, really fucking helped me through a tough time and everything. And that's that's all you want to hear, you know. You don't want anything else from the podcast other than someone has listened to it and has felt marginally better. Okay? That's all you want. And I will get different messages. Now, the ones I won't respond to because I get seven a day are like, oh, my husband's turning 40 and he's a big fan. Could you, like, you know do a birthday message for him. Let me tell you something. I'll never do that. Buy him a fucking present. Buy him a manscaped, okay? 
get him a manscape, twenty percent off, and shave shave his his pace, and you and then be like, oh my god, your your dick is so big. That's a good birthday present, you know. Not rejuvenate his pipe, and maybe you'll look at it and go, fuck, that's that seems new. This is exciting. Imagine it's his birthday. He's like, fucking right. What you got me? PS5, is it? Got a manscape? Gonna take care of this fucking bush? No, hold on a second, honey. Look at my phone. What's happening? Can't get us here. Hey, Tony, just want to say happy birthday. Uh, I know it's locked down. You're probably not up to much, but maybe you can, you know, do a fucking Zoom meeting with your mates, have a couple of pints and all, and do whatever you do, you know? Maybe recreate the time, you know, recreate a night out by just, uh, Kicking a, maybe you maybe you replicate a bus stop in your garden, kick a glass out of it, and empty your you know turn your own bins upside down, just to replicate a night out with you and the lads. Anyway, Tony, have a good one. He'd fucking, I mean, talk about domestic violence being on the rise. <laughs> You'd probably get your fucking new iPhone thrown at you if that was the birth the birthday present. I'm not doing that. But then I get messages from like uh, you know there was a guy from Belfast Trust there. Who was like, you know, I wonder, could you maybe record a little message for some of the staff, you know, in the health and social care area? I don't know if I'll do that separately. This is it. This is your fucking PSA to the Belfast Trust people. Thank you very much for all your hard work this year. Because I'll tell you something, I wouldn't fucking do it. I've been in hospitals a lot recently with my wife. And there's people, you know, it's... You don't even understand how they're there so frequently. Do you ever stay in a hotel and someone like checks you in at 12 at night and then they're there at 6 in the morning again? That's hospitals for you. They never fucking leave. And then if they, you know, the cheek to charge people uh, for parking, you know, when you come out after a 15 hour shift and someone's clamped your car, you're welcome. But yeah, everyone's working very hard, sacrificing their own health, risking their own health. Working around COVID, etc. Incredible work. And uh, the state of the society is reflected in the fact that, you know, some fat cunt with a podcast is is sending you a message for morale. There are two more fucking McDonald's. I'll be in there too. Getting helped out. Avoiding COVID. Unbelievable. Shout out to the trust, man. Shout out to Belfast. I mean, it is funny. I mean, when they were talking about all the, I mean, it was a bit of a fucking hack joke with, with comedians where it's like, you can be on the front line, you know, maybe on a COVID ward, maybe working around some dangerous things, doing some essential work. But then also like a postman is put on the same pedestal. They're like, out there. Risking their lives. Dodging COVID. I mean, shout out to Postman, but like, gee, come on, lads. Do I heard? Was it Hermes drivers get a pound a package? Yeah, that's not bad, especially around Christmas. When you pull up in your van and they're like, here's fucking 700 packages. <laughs> if you could get that done today. 700 sheets in the pocket. You know what I mean? You can tell the staff gets rotated, you know, with the deliveries because um, you'll just see all sorts of folks delivering. Young people, older people, different vehicles. I've had a few, I've had a few people come to the door, a few young lads, you know, where they're like handing the package over and you can see their eyes behind the thing just because no one, no one gives teen boys boners like this guy. And you can see them like, it said Colin Geddes, but then I didn't know it was actually going to be you. You know, I'm standing there in my boxers, fucking baby sick, in my chest hair. What's happening, lad? Leave it in the blue bin next time. <laughs> Good man. Yes, I know there's a clapped out Mercedes just basically abandoned outside the house, paid no attention. It hasn't been able to start in months. I don't know. Fucked up times. Mm. Once again, you know, we're nearly fully out of stuff to talk about. How long have I been talking there? 20 minutes, not bad. Not bad, we're on our second wank, we're working it up. As Kieran Bartlett would say in his piss take song, 
work up a lump to the top of my pump. No. Am I throwing up in my mouth? Yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, that was that was another Christmas tradition. Was at the at the the, the comedians Christmas do. You would put Kieran Bartlett on last. Number one, hard to follow him because you know he is a he is a well educated man, well qualified, has a lot of doctorates and fucking masters and all that shit hanging out his hole. But he is a dangerous guy to put on a lineup because sometimes he'll say rape fourteen times in thirty seconds, and he's just got on stage and you're like, well, can't wait to go on after and try and talk about you know fucking Tinder or whatever people talk about when they do stand up. But if you put him on last at the Christmas do. He will he will close on like uh fairy tale in New York. Um just says faggot real loud. Uh basically basically whispers most of it till he has to say faggot and he screams his head off. No, but it is a magical moment. There is a video of it on Facebook somewhere, it's class. Um I was watching uh have you seen was it Christy Moore's version of that? It's pretty good. I think it's a bit different. I don't know if he does both, you know, bits. The call and answer bit. I don't really think he does that. Let me see if I can play it. Christy. Mer. Um. I was joking about this earlier. I was like, you know, you know you've had pints when you're Googling fucking Christy Mer middle of the night. Can you hear me? Can you hear what's going Save through my board? The Pixel 4A this Black Friday. Okay. Now available for okay. You. Google Pixel 4. No. One night, maybe 10 or 20 or 30 years ago, I can never remember which, but I heard a man from Tipperary singing this song, and I asked him to sing it again and again and again until I had the words. And He always has the bullshit at the start, doesn't he? I fucking, I, I was talking to a chicken on a wall in the middle of fucking Kerry, and he said to me, well then... Then I started singing it myself. It was Christmas Eve. He gives us all hope. There's a couple of front men. There's like him and your guy from Pixies. And, you know, sometimes you can get away with just an ugly cunt of a singer. <laughs> In the drunk tank, an old man said, Son, I won't see another one. I will just sit here and uh, have absolutely no crack. <laughs> that seems always good. Fucking look at the floor and don't make a noise. And then he sang a song. The rare old mountain dew. I turned my... That's good. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I mean, three and a half mil hits. Bruh. How I love you, baby. Good, but then he gets the end. There's some. Our dreams come true. There's, there's more tales at the end. So happy Christmas! I love you, baby. Said Shane McGowan from Pocan in the County Tipperary one grand Friday morning, and then I, I took him <laughs> by the hand and I, I gazed into his Tipperary eyes and I, and I wanked him off. <laughs> I kissed him <laughs> on the lips and I said, Hey Shane. I love you too, baby. Okay. Yeah! Shane McGowan. Someone's bound to have done a piss take where it's just, he never plays the song. You know? He just fucking, he's, it's ramping up. He's about to sing. And then, of course, you know, I found out it was a leap year. Just, what? What are you saying, Christy? Ah, well, you know, you said, I, uh, is quite fond of the drink. Half my, half my brain is porridge. Where am I? I'm sweating. Okay. Well, if that's the. Now this is the. Turn that down. I was talking about this earlier. This is when they trail on she and the guy, and he's shuffling. Doesn't know where he is. People just laugh at him. He walks out and says, oh, thanks very much, cheers. And everyone's like, ha, 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 I can, I can't believe he can talk, the drunken fuck. Hey, where's that list? I need it out here. There's a wee bit of just snap from fucking Christy there. Where's that fucking list? Get it fucking out here now. Or you're fucking sacked, you cunt. Lovely, great to be here. You fucking useless cunt. 
Wonderful. You ever heard this one? Sponsel Hill? Seth and Shane are going to have a go at a song here from a long time ago. Play it. I'm going to sing his version Play and he's going to sing my version. <laughs> Play the fucking song. Last night as I it's one of these ones, you know, like... Of pleasant days gone it's like when you're in a bar and someone starts playing that, you go for a piss. Me mind been bent on rambling And like, Shane McGowan is just... I bet his brain feels like he's just falling down a hill in a barrel right there. Just, just trying to keep his head up. But he fucking... He, 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 just, he just like morph into a different person when he has to actually sing. It's incredible, really. I stepped on board a vision and I followed... We're here. I bring on the 23rd of June the day before the flare When Ireland's sons and daughters are all He's sort of like, he's just like He's one of those voices where it's like, it's like good shit You know, it's like, kind of crap but really works But he just keeps it together Doesn't he? Just can't even fucking pull his deck out to piss, but he can like just completely nail it. Assembled there, the young, the old, the brave, the bold, the ch I mean, oh yeah, and he takes them off, and he just has two anuses for eyes. <laughs> I mean, you laugh at it, but you can't replicate it. Incredible! What a talent! You know, and isn't he English, kind of? I think when he talks, he's like, he's got like a fucking, it's not an, like an Irish accent. Like, all right, bastard. <laughs> all right, nobody says, all right, I'm Shane McGowan. All right, but like everyone off Gogglebox. What's going on here? Every, that's, everyone from Gogglebox is like from the same street, are they? Oh, oh my goodness. What, those two fucking fat girls. I've dropped Maltese on me funny. And then they'll, huh? I don't know, there's one of them's quite hot. Used to be quite hot, I don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> nish, nish. Stop it. Now be more body positive. Size doesn't matter. The worst thing you can do is let yourself go. My, my, <laughs> my philosophy has always been stay gross for a lot. Just stay, just maintain. That's all I've done since for about the last 10 years. You know, you show a photo, you know, put a photo, I was talking about the photo I put up there of the boys. Iron. Five years ago. Looks great. Looks like shit now. You know, Mickey. Five years ago. Looks better. Looks like shit now. Me. I might look marginally better after that time. Not great, but you know, consistency is key, guys. If you're going to look like shit... Just stay at a certain level of shit for a long time. Nailed it. One more time. All you can visualize is a slow-mo gunfight. You know, from like the old school Ra. You know, where they're like, fuck, they got muskets and shit. <laughs> I once or, so, you know, some girl's family's just been wiped out and she's like walking across Irish countryside with like a knapsack. I'm going to America. Like one of those. See what they would say. The old ones, they were dead and gone. The young ones. Christy's like shining. Make sure you get the fucking song right. Anyway, great times. Great for fucking three in the morning when you're hammered. Just being like, this is the shit. Going between that and fucking Dead Mouse piano remixes. You did a Dead Mouse cover, didn't you? We should, can we play that? Is it still up? Is it? Let's review it. <laughs> Not great. Not great? Why? Remake it, yeah. 
Um, what was the song? Strobe. Our boy Niall did a cover online. There you are. Oh, the old, the old empty fucking space text. Yeah, making like a. In fairness, like I've seen different covers of that Strobe song. It's obviously, you know, musically a g good piece of music. The way it like layers itself up. Yeah. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. Fucking mad bastard. Hundred sixteen thousand, bro. What are you doing here, making podcasts? How old is it? 2014? Inferno, like, that, like... You just look like you've had a haircut, that's about the only difference. <laughs> oh shit, he hit a Guinness glass! My god! I'm probably gonna get... This won't go online, I'll get sued. No, I think it's alright. Is it, cause of cover? I mean, like... Stop! I haven't made 50 pounds my whole life on YouTube. Does it do the big when <laughs> smoke flies out? <laughs> yes. Oh fuck, it's dumb, bro. Who's on the piano? Okay. Know the picture? Cliff Richard? <laughs> <laughs> may or may not be a pedophile. Uh, cheese a cheese plate? <laughs> Is this in your house? Jesus Christ. Kicking off, man. I'm mesmerized. Fake arms. And who's this guy? You should have done that thing where you mask out like bits of the room and it's you, there's just you like seven times. There you go, guys. Type in Nile Zors, yeah? N I A L L Z O R Z. Dead mice strobe. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take this guy to 60 quid before Christmas. He's already made 50. Take him to 60 and beyond. Man, you could be making one of those awake and be getting like lots of money. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> now, I will rap over it for the right fee. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dead Mo Five. I met a man in a barn in Tipperary, and he said, "Is that a mouse? It looks dead to me." Why is that light flashing? It's Dead Mouth 5 strobe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure when we went to Rathlin with all the comedians, me and Kieran Bartlett were sitting there playing, you know, there's a guy who plays a piano cover of it. Oh, yeah. And we were just like, man, is there a better piece of music? Yeah. Beautiful. Two of us. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about me here, okay? <laughs> Check them out in your own fucking time, asshole. Right now it's uh 60 quid. 
I could make 60 quid too if I didn't say fucking bugger, uh, you know, in the first five minutes of every fucking podcast. You see, no one sent me that. You know, all these people trying to out you as a former musician. He was in a fucking band. Never sent me any of that shit. That was the first video I ever made. Really? Yeah, put fucking hell. So we're trying to learn finance. <laughs> At the same time. It's pretty good. It's pretty fucking good. You should do that all the time. People are... Uh, peop- eh? Yeah? Wop. <laughs> yeah. What other songs? Born Slippy, you know, so stuff like that, like big. Oh, yeah. What's it go like again? Oh, yeah. Or no, wait, what am I thinking about? Well, I could play that. <laughs> I met Cliff Richard and I said, uh, What are you on for dinner? And he said, Children. Man, I've been on a pedo binge recently. I was was briefly touched on it and (laughs) pardon the pun on the last podcast. Jesus Christ, man. I didn't realize there was a thing over here called Kinkora House, which was like a boy's home and people got fucking like trafficked out of it over to all these places like Elm Guest House and all this here shit where there's like a bunch of fucking MPs coming out of Parliament and just shafting boys in the booty hole. The world is fucked, man, isn't it? Pedo rings. Worst crisps of all time. <laughs> I pulled my headphones out. Ah, oh, Jesus. Back with those fucking girls. What's for dinner? Pedo rings and beads? Oh, get out. But yeah, I've been watching far too many of them things. And it's like, you know, we're getting to the po- a time in history where, you know, you can look at someone and you can go, he's a pedophile. You can look at someone else and be like, this guy's going to shoot up a school. You just know. And then, ch- you know, I watched about three pedo documentaries in a row and one of them's this fucking guy. And he was like 30. And he was just going to fucking Malaysia and just straight up, you know, because you'll just find some kid and be like, where's your parents? Like, I don't know where my parents and then the next minute you're like, well, you can, be my, you can be my wife now, even though you're six. And this guy had like a fucking six to 11, like a five year relationship with this wee girl. And he was taking all photos and putting it in the dark web. And one of the quote, I mean, one of the quotes from the fucking thing was like, it was like fucking, uh, oh, it's not very often, you know, when ch- like he's saying this to other pedos, not very often in child porn you can uh, see, a, the, you know, a child grow up or something. And you're just like, bro, somebody fucking hit him in the face with a sledgehammer. What the fuck is going on with these people, like? And he's still messaging his mate, like, all right, Stephen, um, I might be going away for a while. <laughs> As if his mate's ever going to reply to him. Oh, seriously, mate, I, was, what? I hadn't heard from you in a while. What have you been up to? Sex trafficking kids in Malaysia. Oh, sweet. Mm, working away? <laughs> oh! Unbelievable. Fucking hell. Did I say this on a podcast? I'm going to have a program called Predator Predators. Someone just goes around fucking just off. I think I said that, I think it was Thomas the Maureen or something. I was like, I, I could let, see if someone was like, oh yeah, this person was like sex trafficking children in Malaysia. Because, you know, you don't really think about these things. You don't really think about like the safety of your own children until you have them. And how like, vulnerable a child is if it even fucking is left in a room by itself or you know what I mean so you're just like I I was saying like if someone told me that I could like I could be eating my dinner you know what I mean and just put a bit of food in my mouth and stand up and just walk over and just boot someone off a a cliff and then watch them hit the floor and then sit down to my dinner again and be like okay there you go look what you've done you've turned me into a fucking psychopath unbelievable but uh, yeah this podcast is slowly gonna turn into just you know, Connor Mickey's. That's what the money is, conspiracies. If you want if you want money in podcasting, you talk about conspiracies or you you be a girl who's just overly sexual. That's what you do. 
So you could, you know, if, if you could, if you could combine the two, conspiracy posts. Welcome back to conspiracy flaps. How to give the best blowjob on Epstein's island? There you go. Worlds collide. Got to get the fuck out of here very shortly. I've talked too long already. I, pro I said I wasn't going to talk too long, and I've talked for fucking ages. Haven't I? Fuck off. Our second sponsor, as usual, is uh, CB. No, no, cut. <laughs> our OG sponsor, our day ones, flowcbdltd.com. The boys. Gonna get them on to do a podcast, I just remembered. If they're speaking to each other anymore. These fucking weirdos. You know, you can't all look the same and then fall out. <laughs> Who are you, Hanson? That's what they are. They're the Harry Hansen. Pretty much. Um, but anyway, yeah, the, they make CBD. CBD, of course, is uh, the number one supplement we should all be taking. CBD oil. Um, it's not psychoactive. doesn't get you high, but it gives you some of the benefits of, you know, a cannabis product. Makes you relaxed. Helps you sleep. Can soothe anxiety. Reduces inflammation. It's good shit. And you might as well shop local up in this hoe. So, um... This is made here, or it's produced here, or it's not produced. I don't know where it's produced. It's assembled here. It is actually Dutch. Yeah, it's proper Dutch weed, crushed down and extracted and all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, flowcbdltd.com. If you're on my Patreon, you can get that uh, ten percent off. I do believe, with a secret code that is pinned to the top of the Patreon. So, get on there. I'm going to get the fuck out of here very shortly. I did see a guy, um, it was a video, there was an ex-MMA guy called Dean Lister. Have you ever taken any psychedelics now? No. We should do that for Christmas. What are you having for Christmas? Mushroom tea. Bit of that. Um, but I've seen this thing, and uh, <laughs> I think he'd sort of, this guy had sort of, you know, it wasn't that a, wasn't it rock bottom? It was basically just like, I felt like it was kind of trapped in my own life. And he was drinking, like, he said he had like 20 beers a day and then would take Xanax to go to sleep. And he was like, I just needed like a fucking reset or whatever. And he took, I'll send you this video now, it's very strange. He, he took, like, was it ayahuasca or mushroom tea or something? One of these rituals. And he took like a fucking big old pile of it and everybody else was just taking the normal amount so they were on the floor all these fucking hippies and they're like elephant pants that they got in fucking Thailand and they're all lying there like oh bro and he took a big lethal dose of it and uh, he was just sitting there and he was like huh. he was like did I just die? he's like damn did I just die? and uh, he, you know he had his wee visions or whatever and then probably threw up a couple of times and then he woke up and he was just like you know he goes, I think what I experienced was like my version of hell. And he goes, it wasn't like all demons and fire and everything. He goes, it was just really boring and lonely. And he's like, it scared the shit out of him. And he was like, uh, yeah, I just knew I had this sort of change. And if you get that, like, what do they call it? Like survivor euphoria, where he kind of, like his body and mind thought that he technically had died in this trip. So when he woke up, he was like, wow, I've just really got a bit of a kick up the arse there. And, uh, you know, I need to sort of change my life around. And sh sure enough, he was like, I haven't drank and I haven't fucking taken any pills ever since this one moment. Pretty cool. But isn't it funny that like, you know, he was like, I did not, he wrote on his Instagram, he's like, I did not take this recreationally. He's like, I took this as like a bit of a sort your life out type thing, which apparently it's quite good for. Um, but yeah, weird as shit. But all I want to do now is take mushrooms. Where's the DMT at? Why, why, do you, why can you only buy mushrooms in the fucking dodgiest spot on earth? Oh, go to go to Amsterdam, take them and fucking, you know, fall in a canal. Have a barge go over your head. Like your woman out of Pogues. That's how she died. Christmas Eve. <laughs> you, I mean, do you know what kills you if you fall into a canal? You just hit a pile of bikes. That's what happens in fucking, that's what happens in Amsterdam, you just fall in and a pedal goes through your neck. And that's the end of it. 
Anyway, how long have we talked for? I said it was only going to do half an hour. How long is it? I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm fucking out of here. Manscaped.com. Uh, you know, use the code Jambat1. Get 20% off. FlowCBDLTD.com if you want your fucking your, your, uh, CBD products there. And get on the Patreon. We're going to record 12 extra podcasts and release them from the every day. New one every day from the 25th to the 5th of January. It's going to be monumental. I'm getting out of here. I'll talk too long. I'm away. See you later.